released in March 2013, Tomb Raider is a reboot of a popular action-adventure franchise from Crystal Dynamics and Eidos. And it's also part of Square Enix's ac- recent acquisitions. Uh, with Square Enix track record being pretty good recently, with such titles as Sleeping Dogs, Hitman Absolution, it's it's there's a high expectation here that this would be a very good and strong PC port. Does it deliver, first of all, as a PC port? And secondly, does it deliver as a game? Um, bearing in mind the Tomb Raider series did start to get a little stale towards the end. And also it's worth considering that the word reboot has really bad connotations, at least as far as I'm concerned, as it often means that a franchise is just being rehashed and sometimes they are never as good as they used to be. Anyway, let's take a look at Tomb Raider for the PC. The new Tomb Raider is an origin story. It focuses on the young Lara Croft and her first foray into the life of an adventurer. This could have been cheesy as hell, but Crystal Dynamics have found a good balance between story and action here. The story never feels too light and at the same time it's not intrusive or heavy handed, affecting the gameplay. Newer franchises and even some of Square Enix's Japanese division should really take note of this. The young Lara is a great character, not just to play as, but also to watch and listen to. She's never annoying or melodramatic, and even though there's a lot been said about the screaming at the beginning of the game, the narrative supports this perfectly. How would you feel as a young university student being caught up in the traumatic events which are depicted in this game? Exactly like this, I would imagine. The storyline, though not the most original in the world, kept me hooked from the very start of the game right through to its conclusion. Lara and her friends must escape a mysterious island following a shipwreck. The story has a great emphasis on realism, more so than in previous entries in the series, but it still has that sort of wonderful Tomb Raider fantasy element to it, and a mixture of old and new works really well in my opinion. The most striking element of the game is how Crystal Dynamics have really stepped up to the plate as far as game mechanics are concerned. The last Tomb Raider title, Tomb Raider Underworld, had strong gameplay but this takes it to a whole new level of refinement. For once in the Tomb Raider game the camera is absolutely perfect and controls very smoothly. This was one of my biggest complaints in previous entries in the series, and I'm very glad to report that it's now been rectified. In fact, the way in which Lara controls is possibly one of the best uh, control schemes that I've actually seen in a 3D action adventure game. Everything feels responsive with the character animation servicing the gameplay rather than hindering it. Both shooting and melee combat work flawlessly and the cover system in Tomb Raider is one of the best I've seen in any game. Rather than having you press a button and hold it to take cover, Lara does this automatically. However, this never leads to the biggest failure in most third-person shooters, sticking to walls. Never did the cover system in Tomb Raider cause me to fail at the game, and in fact, it's so intuitive that you don't even notice it, and that really has to be one of the highest compliments that any sort of game mechanic can have. There is a basic levelling system to the game where Lara earns XP by finding artefacts, navigating puzzles and dealing damage. The XP can be then spent on upgrading weapons and skills. This is not the deepest system, but it does encourage the player to experiment with the game and go off the beaten path to discover new things. And there is plenty to discover here. There are a lot of collectibles in true Tomb Raider fashion and it's also full of really small and satisfying little segments of gameplay which never outstay their welcome and provide a variety to the campaign. Aside from Lara herself, the star of the show has to be the island. It's difficult to describe as the campaign, although it's a linear experience with a defined path, opens up into a more exploratory sort of game once a level is completed. This means it's essentially an open world game where you can walk from the coast at the very start of the game right through to other locations without any loading screens. This provides an excellent replay value and I often found myself having a break from the story and just exploring the areas I've discovered. I won't beat around the bush. 
Tomb Raider is an absolutely beautiful game, not only from a technical perspective, but also by virtue of its art design. All the locations within the game feel unique, and I never felt as though anything was being recycled. The game boasts some of the best lighting and weather effects I've ever seen in a game, they rival anything I've seen in the current iterations of Unreal and CryEngine. Even on normal settings the texture work is outstanding, and there are very few instances of blurry textures. Crystal Dynamics have included a bevy of options for the PC player to tinker with. There is DirectX 11 tessellation support, resolution, texture quality, high precision lighting, texture filtering, a number of depth of field and uh, screen place ambient occlusion effects to toggle away with. Played on high settings, the game is absolutely breathtaking. The high quality screen space ambient occlusion adds fantastic depth to every scene, and to my eyes at least, the game is almost devoid of geometry pop in for the most part. This feels very much like a next generation experience on the PC, just like Hitman Absolution did before it. All in all, the Crystal Engine, as I believe it's called, is one of the most impressive pieces of in house software I've seen for a long, long time. It's very much the total package, as not only does it produce fantastic environments, character models and animation are equally outstanding. This level of graphical presentation is rarely seen in multi-platform releases outside of Crisis. It follows a trend which we're seeing in development where publishers have clearly invested in flexible engines that not only run on the aging consoles but also shine on current PC hardware. This is clearly the start of some of the benefits we can expect as the lines between consoles and PC architecture begin to blur. Like the Anvil Next engine in the Assassin's Creed series, it's apparent that Square Enix have developed a cross-generational engine to service future sequels. Built on PC rather than just ported over from consoles seems to be the mantra for this coming generation. How does it run? Well, how would you expect a game that looks this good to run? It, it can be a bit uh, slow, uh, even on my system. Now, I'm using a second generation Sandy Bridge uh, i7 processor um, clocked in at 2.5 gigahertz, and that's coupled with 16 gigabytes of RAM and um, a 675M from Nvidia with 2 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, I got around 45 to 60 frames per second in 720p on high settings and around 26 to 40 at 1080p. Now, the caveat here is that um, Nvidia uh, have been slowing the mark to release an actual driver for this game. So, it's, it's running on the old drivers and uh, Crystal Dynamics have recently patched it. That did give me uh, about a 7 to 8 frame boost just using that patch alone. So I'm, I'm hopeful that the, it will speed up quite substantially once this is released. However, I wanted to get this review out and um, I did wait to see when this, would, this uh, driver would finally come out. It still hasn't as of this video. I may give an update in one of my future videos as to if there has been a performance increase or not. But it is a pretty hefty game and it is using some very cutting edge effects, particularly with the lighting and shadows. The overall effect is absolutely outstanding and thanks to a very high quality motion blur, uh, it doesn't really show too much slowdown when, when, when the frame rate does slow down. That being said, I did find the frame rate inconsistent in that you would have 60 frames a second and then there'd be just one corner of the game which would make it drop. Uh, dramatically about 10 frames. I believe people with ATI cards are having a lot easier time with this and that could be because they actually got the uh, ATI actually got the game a lot earlier than Nvidia did. But all in all it doesn't perform badly and uh, for what you're getting you have to remember everything that this game is achieving on screen and so I can't claim this to be a shoddy port because a shoddy port it is not as far as I'm concerned it's it's a very high quality port very much like Sleeping Dogs and Hitman Absolution Square Enix is doing an admirable job for the PC and aside from Ubisoft as well they're one of the big publishers which are actually taking this platform seriously I'm looking at you EA and I'm looking at you Activision sort your stuff out <sighs> 
So what did I think of Tomb Raider? Well, I have to say, categorically, it is one of the best games I've played this generation. Um, I, I suppose time is meaningless as far as PCs are concerned, because we just keep on going as opposed to console iterations. But if we were to look at the... So the most recent seventh generation of consoles from the time period of around 2005 to the present day, I would say this is one of the best games that's come out. It, it Hands down, it has a perfect balance of action, adventure, storytelling. Um, it has an adequate amount of exploration. The graphics and presentation on this game are incredibly high, almost to uncharted um, territory here. <laughs> it's... Um, I, I mean, the Uncharted series on the PS3 is one of those modern standout action adventure games. But if we think about it, those type of games are actually in, more and more in short supply these days, at least good ones. And I think it is at least on par, if not better. I prefer Lara Croft to Nathan Drake as a protagonist in, in, this, in these type of games. And particularly with this new setting, which is so much more real. And um, they seem to have learned all of the game mecha- from all of the game mechanics that they put in previous iterations, what worked and what didn't, but they've also looked at practically every other genre within, uh, within gaming over this seventh generation, and they have put it all into a blender, and it works, and it works incredibly well. I had so much fun playing this game. A five out of five from me, hands down, the easily the best game I've played in years, and I play a lot of games. <laughs> So, t- you know, take that for what it's worth. If you have an opportunity to pick it up, definitely pick it up. Hopefully, for those of us with N- NVIDIA cards, we'll get the driver update soon. It will improve performance at least a little bit. But it is, now, at least now, a decent enough standard to, to play it um, with all the bells and whistles on. It is a resource hog, so bear that in mind. Um, <laughs> it may- it may be worth waiting in, in case there's a demo that comes out or something like that before you try it. But um, it's a AAA experience and and the PC implementation is second to none. Um, a bevy of options and, and the game does look absolutely outstanding on full settings. If you can whack it on 1080p or above, you are absolutely laughing. But I really wouldn't suggest using anything below an NVIDIA 660 here. Um, you would at least need that to power this game and do it as just desserts. You aren't going to play it on anything lower, I don't think. Anyway, 5 out of 5 for Tomb Raider. An absolutely wonderful game. A big thank you, I think, is necessary to Crystal Dynamics for resurrecting a very popular character and giving giving her a modern makeover which does not sully anything that came before. In fact, it plays homage to it. But unlike many properties which get reboots, it's not trying to reinvent the wheel. It's remembering exactly where it's come from, but adding new elements to it. My only wish was, if they do make a sequel, just to have a little bit more platforming in it. Um, I thought the puzzles were adequate for what they are. Um, And it's actually quite nice to not be hitting those walls every five minutes. Uh, because you can't solve a problem or you can't find a way around things. Um, something I didn't mention in my voiceover was um, this almost Batman detective mode that Lara has to pick up on uh, items and uh, also pieces of the landscape which she can use to her advantage. The, the thing about it, I didn't use it all that much. I think I only used it maybe once or twice when I got a bit stumped. Um, other than that, maybe to find out which direction I needed to go. A, a fantastic, fantastic to have it there. Um, but maybe next time they could do, I don't know, a hardcore survivor mode or something like that, where you can just uh, turn that off and go full on um, old school Tomb Raider. It's actually perked my interest up again in, in looking back at the previous games, which I probably will do. I may even review Tomb Raider Underworld. Who knows? Anyway, I'm a laptop gamer, and I'll see you next time.